right, let's finish these holes and get this thing on the road for some tests. Another expensive thing I had to order a specific drill bit, 1532. I'm just gonna have to do my best, I guess. Okay, a bit of a job to melt some of that insulation on the inside, but I'm really happy with how these are holding. They seem very secure, waterproof. There's a rubber gasket on the inside. I could hit it up with some RV silicone, or sorry, sealant later, but probably not even necessary. I'm gonna solder in XT90 connector on the end of that. And this is the battery I'm gonna connect it to. Everything is hunky dory, 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 dory. The controller should be plugged in first, and then the battery. All right, finally got my sensors hooked up. So right brake, right here, and then cyber drop hub motor, regen braking there. In the end, I may just end up buying some e-brake levers and forgetting about fiddling around with these sensors because they tend to come loose while you're riding. You have to kind of adjust them every now and then. And for the worldwide travels, I think we'll get dedicated e-brake handles. Okay, it's time to take this out for a spin. So, I always forget how to, it's like back in a trailer, I gotta get used to it again. He's excited. There's always something you forget. For example, my porch lights. <laughs> All right. Feels pretty good back there. I'm gonna beat the Tesla. Max acceleration. It's amazing. It feels so smooth and so effortless. It feels like I'm not even pulling anything. Every neighbor's looking at me. <laughs> it's like right away they understand. I don't know what that is. I've never seen one before, but I know it's awesome. Come to think of it, I didn't even tighten the bolts. <laughs> They're only finger tight. <laughs> Jeez, this is gonna be great. Oh, I forgot to close the window. That's all regen right there. In control. Does it work? Yeah. I'll tell you, it's the talk of the neighborhood. I'm ready to go. <laughs> let's, hit, let's hit the road. I won't know if there's something really wrong until I ride it for a few hundred kilometers, you know? Mm. Gotta take it up to Peterborough. All right, things are getting exciting. I pull out my drone, I'm gonna get some epic shots, and then I hit a tree and destroyed the rear left arm of the drone, so I've gotta send that in for repair. And beautiful day here, but I also had some issues with the controller controlling the front hub motor on my mountain bike. I don't know what happened, I just uh, was doing the droning, got back on the bike, and all of a sudden I'm having all kinds of jolts and judders coming out of the motor. So I suspect something is wrong, and it's probably with the controller. So back to the garage. All right, so it's the next day, and I've been troubleshooting since last night trying to figure out what it, what it is. Yeah, I'll show you what's going on here and what I'm going to try to do to fix it. Uh, nothing happened that would make me think it's the motor. Like I didn't spin out a cable. The torque arm is still on there nice and strong. Next thing I'm gonna try is the hall sensor and make sure that it's giving the appropriate signals, alternating between close to five volts and zero volts. So I'm just gonna try to splice in here with my probes. So I gotta get the jacket off. Look at this, it's even got a nice 
little insulation foam all around it. Such a shame to tear up such a nice cable. From 4.25 should be close to zero now on green. Okay, give it a spin. That's good, keep going. Okay, I followed the troubleshooting guide for checking the hall sensor. All the signals appear normal, varying from high four volts to zero volts. So they seem fine. I've decided to use rib nuts to secure any interior storage compartments or anything else I'll be fastening to the walls or ceilings. I have these rib nuts on hand. They're zinc plated from a previous project. And I bought this rib nut gun off Amazon to um, secure everything in place. So I'm just gonna do a test here. So I've drilled my hole. I've got my five mil my M5 mandrel on there, you screw that on top. Put it in the hole. Apply pressure downwards in or into the hole and then squeeze. And that pulls it up into the material and then you just unscrew it. Let's open them up and uh, see what we got here. Okay, it's time for my first night in the cyber drop. I've got my self-inflating mattress. Decided to go with this Froley spring system. I don't think it's gonna be necessary for condensation. However, for comfort, I'm thinking it might be just what the luxury doctor ordered. Just to be nice and cozy. Don't tr trust these stabilizer legs just yet. <laughs> Settle down a bit. Okay, first night in the cyber trap. Let's dim the lights a little, shall we? If I stretch out my arms for a nice morning stretch, ah, you can see it's just enough space for a full stretch of my arm. <laughs> what else is there to say? It's Four degrees outside in the garage now, and it's only been about 25 minutes in here. And as you can see, it's just about 20 degrees Celsius, room temperature. So I'm warm, I'm comfortable, and if anything, I'm gonna have to crack the window a little more. And I might even turn the, oh, and I might even turn the fan on low just to create a little breeze in here because I'm getting so warm. I'm so pleased with that, because, that means that this is totally suitable for cold winter camping. Okay, it's seven in the morning. I didn't have the best sleep, mostly because my mattress situation wasn't comfortable. The temperature dropped down to 10 degrees Celsius in here, outside zero degrees, so 10 degree differential. Uh, condensation as expected on the, on the door and the door frame. But it's not really dripping down. Everything else obviously is dry. I do notice that the foam, which is not perfectly airtight, a little damp to the touch. I think for the most part that neoprene covering is doing its job. And as expected, you can see the stabilizer legs as opposed to the warm air inside. So they've got just as much condensation on them as the window and door. This is about the time you do that Titanic scene. Do, 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 do. Overall, I think this is a successful test. Let's time it. It's been 
15 minutes, a little over 15 minutes. And I'd say a little over half the condensation is gone. Okay, that's been 40 minutes. And a couple little droplets left, but mostly took care of it. Good job, fan. I destroyed my drone, but I've still got my camera just outside of Coburg, Ontario. Getting some smiles though, people are into it. A little encouragement goes a long way sometimes, you know? I forgot to start up the engine. That's what it sounds like to come roaring to life. Yeah, I mean, it's feeling really good. Feels great, feels stable. All the benefits of a Tesla plus exercise and fresh air, and it's a lot cheaper. Okay, maybe not much. <laughs> so far, it's tracking beautifully. It doesn't even feel like it's behind you. Really happy with it. Hey. Are you okay? Oh yeah, yeah, just doing some YouTube filming. <laughs> Thanks. Maybe I'll try to get low down and do a bump test and show you the suspension in action. Wouldn't that be cool? Am I smart enough to do it so I can put it in slow-mo after? We'll find out. Second slow pass. Twenty-five kilometers an hour. Here we go. And one last slow pass. It's looking good. Does it look like something out of Tron or like? <laughs> cool. I just can't believe how fast you go. It's actually insane. Yeah, I definitely want dual throttles to control how much power going to each motor. So with this much weight, there's always tr differences in traction and you can modulate each throttle to really deal with that traction nicely. Overall though, I am pleased with the slave mode of the cycle analyst. I think that's definitely a viable option. Ooh, thought I lost the edge there. Definitely gotta be extra careful on the soft stuff. Such a beautiful day, testing going really well. I'm gonna head down to the beach. Oh, yes I am. <laughs> Peter, by the way. Peter Jeremiah. Jeremiah? Yeah. Oh, Jeremiah. That's a beautiful name. Thank you, Peter. Yes, you're in the Bible just like me. Yeah. Ah. Right. Oh, my goodness. I, there is a lot of room in there. Yeah. Holy wow. smokes. That's never seen one before. Yeah, there you go. Well, I appreciate <laughs> the encouragement. Well, no, I think it's the sensible thing to do. Well, it guys fit for the job. Exactly. That's it. That's it. That's great. It's Lovely to meet you. Hi. You're okay. Hey, it's a good Every year I have to go around and... Do it all, every year you do it? Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they recommend every 90 days. Wow. I mean, who the hell is going to do it every 90 days? And you just go over the old stuff or do you have to strip it all? You go over the old stuff just to reseal everything. Wow. And so so if you don't do it every 90 days, then they say, well, sorry, sorry your warranty's up. He's a bit of a jerk with big dogs. Little guard dog. Yeah. Fit in my little home here. <laughs> what is that? It's a bicycle camper. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I've never seen one of those. It's the world's first electric powered bicycle camper for long range travel. For real? Yeah. I built it over the last eight months. No way. Just out testing it today. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that's so cool. Thanks. You have to sell them. Yeah, that's <laughs> this is the first prototype. Oh, there you go. And it's even got a little sunroof and everything. Yeah. Yep, full ventilation, no way. climate control, uh, yeah. all-wheel drive. It's got a, <laughs> it's got a two-top induction uh, stove. Oh, does it? All electric. 
powered off my inverter. It's all good. Wow. So when my wife kicks me out, I can just put that on my bike. Yeah, you just that you just get one of these. It's, yeah, no, it's okay. My mom said that too. It does. It's a nice coffin though. It is a nice coffin. Maybe uh, when I pass, I'll go in this. There you go. Trip of a lifetime, and if you die, you got a coffin. Yeah, exactly. Well, I had my son when I was 19, so I still. Hey, high five. Hey, Best time to have a kid is yesterday, right? Yesterday. Like planting a tree.